All right, that's it for prep time. It's been 40 minutes. Um, we now move on to begin the debate. So allow me to formally welcome you guys to round four, the last round of this year's competition. Congratulations on making it this far. And I hope that this tournament was a memorable experience for you guys. And you guys have a lot of learnings to take with you in future debate tournaments. I wish both teams the very best of luck. Debating on the motion that this house prefers to keep personal experiences and thoughts closed and private rather than having them open and public. We call on Prime Minister to open this debate. Um, am I both audible and visible? Yes, you are, and you may begin when you're ready. Okay. Um, my preferred pronouns are she, her, and I'll begin my speech in three, two, one. Judge, words move faster than you think. When somebody says, and it's undeniable that it actually goes on and on in twisted forms because we believe the harms that all will give to the debate is much more massive than our harms. We're so surprised to propose this motion. The two things in debate for you, Judge. First, I'm framing questions to contextualize the debate. And second, introducing our first two constructive arguments that Carter Avery will introduce the third. So before we start, the key clarification is down the bench here. So first, what is the concept that why are we debating this motion in the first place? A, because words are words, it is very easy to turn into different forms that are not actually true that the speaker actually said, right? B, we can already encounter the ubiquity of, of cases of where a phrase can, uh, can um, off offend this person seriously. And we believe this is a harm to for them today. And two, what do we define as personal experiences and thoughts? A, the word thought has a very vague definition, but side profits from like to define it as a thought that affects others and affects other opinions of what you say. That's what the personal experience, that's what personal thought is. If it actually affects other people's opinions in, in a way. And B, we believe that the personal experiences are necessary because we believe that if your personal experiences and thoughts are negative, it is rather to keep it they're rather blatantly spitting out to the public and see we like to define public as everyone except the ones that you're close with so everybody who who except who, who you're close with by the end of the day what we like to prove to you judge is one keeping it private and personal information solve problems that we are going to give you from our favorite and two the opposite of not solve and prop solve better in the problem that we like to present today our sequel that we like to support in our case is one citizen and people as a whole and th that we like to support today. Now going on to two constructive arguments here. So first, we believe it's actually offensive to others in a way if you if, because words are twisted easily. So why is it true, Judge? A, it is impossible for you to control 24-7 about what you're going to say in the next second, about what you're trying to tell them. And because there's a high probability that that word is turned out to be negative, that is also a high chance it can create a conflict and ignite conflict between the public and you. So B, but why does that uh but what, so why does it not happen in our world, Judge? If we live in a world of where people think before we talk, people are going to be more aware of their words. People are going to think before they talk because the benefit of this, Judge, not like the stress here is first, it actually helps people lessen the conflict that are going to rise arise in society. And two, it actually forms a deeper and better relationship with publics uh with public that um in, in our world. So why is it important to judge what's our impact here? A, because these personal experiences that thoughts are opinions, that is not a credible or believable source. And and so probably will rather encourage people to say things that they're almost sure that um and that when it does not affect others negatively in, in their opinions. And and B and B. And now let's see why this is not going to happen. Now, what's our, uh, and why is that going to what's our propensity analysis? A, she made the most of her easily targeted and easily damaged judge. That way, side op is giving an arrow to them while, while um, side problem ends and, and rather prevents it from actually, actually getting her MB. For example, let's, let's say that you have a stat, right? But you actually get, like, no, you give an opinion, but you rather get criticized for it. You'll still get damaged, right? You'll still get emotional, emotional damage. So, and, and see, this, we believe that it actually stop discrimination for the Black people, Asian people, and LGBTQ communities. We believe that we actually protect uh, um, communities because it actually leads to less discriminatory remarks. And this actually lets these minorities of an oppressive society actually thrive as well because there are a lot of kinds that actually discourage them because we need to ensure that our, our that our words does not in any way affect opinion negatively. We let our, our first argument still stand. And second, it's, it's 
act unnecessary judge. Why is this true? A, let's just say that there, that these words are not negative and not offensive, but we still believe that we should keep it private because it's unnecessary judge. B, even though it is a positive remark, if someone starts criticizing it to you, of course you will feel damaged. The harm of damaging, of damaging a feeling still uh, still uh, happens if, if, even if it's positive or negative because there's high probability that, that you're going to affect it the impact here the similar to previous impacts with a focus if, with a focus on the prior prior agent of of like solely facts and actually solely facts, things that does not uh, um, affect their opinions. Like we believe that the negative harm, that negative harm heavily overweighs the positive positive benefits that we have given. We're so surprised for posting motion. Thank you. We thank the prime minister to open the case for opposition, leader of opposition. Can I have like 30 seconds? Let me begin when you're ready. Am I clearly visible and audible? Yes, you are. Yes, thank you. My speech will start in three, two, one. Even if we concede to everything their first speaker said, we still outweigh their impacts. Five things in my speech. First, characterize what the society looks like. Two, in state our basic mechanism, three, trade our state off, and four, robot, and five, move on to our teams to conduct our arguments. So let me first characterize what, what the many problems in the society are actually getting, it, like, getting getting in the society. So many problems are hidden in the society because they don't want other people to view the society as a society where like abuse happens or etc. This means that the high officials that actually get the information, which is private, are going to hide it and this isn't going to be shown to public. So here's the trade-off here, Judge. Even if a lot of people get their thoughts or in the, or like experiences in the society that are embarrassing, we would have never reached the world in the first place right now because we wouldn't have any innovation. We'd just be catching fish in the river right now. So the Here's the mechanism. If you're a minority, you're surrounded by other minorities, and because you mostly live in the similar environment as other people. And if you're a high official, then you have a power to silence things out. If that problem causes a bad feel like abuse happening or etc. to the society, because they want the society to seem perfect because there are high officials in the society. So here are a few rebuttals that I don't think we're really uh, like need to rebut. So they talked to their whole case was basically about how it's embarrassing. They get offended, they get stressed, and it's unnecessary because they focus on like because needing to focus on private stuff. Yes, we can see to their point, but this won't be a problem in the first place because their side, they won't develop or have any innovation to actually live in the society here that we are living right now because the theories or the ideas, what they have solved, the, the problems wouldn't have happened in the first place, which I'll explain, elaborate more on my second argument. So moving on to our team's actual constructive case, here's our first argument of how we identify social problems. So two layers to this argument. First, the status quo. If a person witnesses a problem, because you can't tell the other uh, people in the in the society of the prop side, you're going to tell like the high officials or like or the people that actually have power, right? And you're going to tell the people that had a certain type of power in the society and which is what they call private. However, these people actually hide it down. This also is unequal and unequal because they are going to get like, because the politicians or these high officials are the only ones that actually get uh, information because they have a certain amount of power in the society. And two, because the social minorities' problems are hidden behind the curtains, they aren't going to whistle blow. They aren't going to have like have any minority problems solved, or, or the public is not going to know what's going on to the going on in the current status quo. And minorities are going to suffer. Minorities that are suffering in the status quo are going to keep on suffering because nobody realizes the problem in the status quo. However, on our side, at least we identify the problems. Ident identify the problems in the status quo. So let's let's give an example of a Nike, right? If they're abused, like private, like if they're safe and private, then the children will like so tell their parents or like the company. So what can they actually do? The company will hide off this problem because it gives a bad, bad reputation to their company. And the parents aren't going to say this to the company. And at least on our side, they can tell like CNN or whatnot to actually achieve to solving these problems. So let's move on to our second point about innovation. So innovative thoughts are actually what improved the society in the first place. If no one talks about 
slavery in like the in like the age before, there will still be slavery in the society because the only person they know about it, they can't talk about it to the media or etc. Meaning that there's actually no way to solve these problems, which means this is this will be still existing in the society. And new ideas like scientific theories, these are personal thoughts, right? Which means that if they they won't say this, they if only like a certain groups know it, and no one will tell these things to the other person because they don't like being corrected in the first place. The, like for example, like Marie Curie, be before Marie, Curie, like after Marie Curie had like experiments, she found out that radioactive material can actually kill cancer, right? So what would have actually happened if she kept this information to only a certain amount of people and only tell it to a private amount of people? Pe people, what would have happened to the society right now if they couldn't have found out how to actually kill cancer? So scientific innovation saves a lot of people, saves a lot of people, and they can't improve the society anyway on there. So I'm very proud to. Very proud to oppose. We thank the leader of opposition to extend the stance of government, Deputy Prime Minister. Can we have 30 seconds, please? Um, yeah, sure, just enough time to get ready to deliver your speech, please because um, we already had 40 minutes of prep time. BPM, you can begin when you're ready. Okay, so am I all over invisible? Yes, so, you are. Okay, then my speech will start in three, two, one. On the DPM street, we went to the rebuttals. So their first argument was about like the status quo and the, like the problems of the minority. And like we believe that the problems of the minority is not going to happen in the first place because they talked about bad things about like the company and Harvard. Like that is a problem, not a personal like thinking of a person. We think that pe people are actually logical enough to talk about things uh, that talk about like problems in this company in the first place. And we don't think it's a problem. And therefore, their first argument does not stand. And the second argument was about like innovation and how scientists are not going to share their ideas. Uh, but first of all, scientists. Scientists are in the, making innovations, right? However, we are not completely like not shared to the public. Also, because scientists' job is to share this innovation and their ideas, we don't think that they're so illogical. They're they're not gonna do their job in the first place. It's their job to do this innovation, uh, uh, share their innovation. So we think like our uh, this motion is rather about personal thinkings and personal like, experiences, and we don't think and because scientists' their job, they're like official. Their job is to make these ideas. We think it's irrelevant for the for the motion. So their second argument also does not stand in today's debate. And I'll take that feeling later. And our first argument was, so we built our first argument. So our first argument was how it's offensive to others. And I'd like to add that the thoughts about religion, political, et cetera, can be offensive to others, especially to the minorities, which is very harmful. And, and that's why we believe that actually minorities will be more harmed in the opposition's world and they have like talked about innovation however as i said people people the scientists are actually going to like share their ideas because their job is done so we believe that, uh, first of all this uh, this rebuttal is irrelevant because we have talked about like offensive to others and how it can hurt others feeling and, and their Therefore, and therefore our first argument still stands. And our second argument was about how it's unnecessary. And I'd like to add that these gossips happen, especially in schools, because students talk about someone to other people. And we can solve this problem because students can just think in their minds and they don't have to hurt anyone's feelings. And, and therefore, we also uh, our second argument still stands because they have never brought to this argument. Uh, before moving on to my argument, I will take a POI. Okay, so people who find out fire thousands of years ago is not scientists. Would they still tell everyone that they found out fire? Wait, sorry or laggy? 
Can you say it? Can you repeat it again? It's not. It's not. People who found out fire thousands of thousands of years ago is not scientists. Would they still tell everyone, even though they even though they still found fire, and you're supposed to keep your thoughts private? Okay, so first of all, finding a fire is a fact. Like, like, yeah, and also like finding a fire, like it's like an important thing. And we think in a really, really important situation, we are going to talk it, talk like share it to the public. And therefore, like oh, as we said, we're not like going to like stop people from like talking everything to the public. We think like most like private personal information they have to share uh, be private, and therefore it's irrelevant. And move on to our team's third argument, which is happier society. So do we make a happier society for people because we can prevent a lot of harms coming from the off world. First is personal information. So we believe that when people have people like have their personal like personal experience public, then people the public are going to see it, right? So therefore, for example, the people talk about their experience or thoughts about someone, and the people are there. People that will be offended and because their personal information can be shared to people who talk about them. And therefore these people personal can these people's personal information can be shared. And second, experiences and thoughts depend on people or the perspective. We have talked about this in our first argument, but, but I'll like to talk more about this since this is very important. First about political thoughts. Just this political thought can be shared to a public a lot in the status quo. And these harms are one fights between two sides and two affect others who have logical opinions in the First place and just these harms weigh a lot because political thoughts can be a topic to fight this and uh, to fight and this is happening because political thoughts are like people have different opinions about it and therefore our world prefers a world to like help for this to happen less and because these political opinions should be rather kept in their heads so that these harms do not stress and their third there is false information so these personal experiences thoughts change the people right so look at the these experiments, something they said to the public, the, the public say that it's wrong, then these people will be emotionally damaged because they thought it's right. And therefore, and also other people can think about these, other people can also believe this false information and believe that this is very uh, harmful. For example, celebrities, fans are going to believe them and therefore I'm very proud to put those. We thank the Deputy Prime Minister to extend the case for opposition. Deputy Leader of Opposition. Okay, I'd like to talk my, uh, I'd like to, sorry. And I'd like to start my speech in three, two, one. Judge, we think that the previous speaker literally wasted four minutes of her speech literally explaining on something that we literally conceded, right? This is the debate. Our prime minister explained how we have two, we have two complete different sides, right? This side, th this debate is about which side brings the more, like stops the more harm or stops or, or makes the more benefits. Notice how the deputy literally explained how how, how like we concede this side? Yes, we did concede this. Side. This is because we think that the amount of uh, harms that we we stop in our side of the house is bigger than the amount of benefits that uh, the, that the harm that they also also stop to. Therefore, we think that this is just the de uh, the deputy just completely misunderstood what the actual point of this motion from the prime minister that we uh, from the prime minister we explained. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. No, that's one to counter rebuttals. Firstly, on how they say that uh, the, the two only rebuttals that I found, which are kind of similar, is that how their people are still logical to think and to actually tell. Just like scientists, they have innovation to tell. But notice how, let's just say that they have the incentive to actually tell it, which is kind of our case, which they also kind of conceded. L look, even if these people have the incentive, which is kind of our case, because proposition supports a world where many of the things are actually private, only these small groups, where like these people, where, the where like these people who have the same idea, will know this. That means that these people cannot effectively actually share. These people have to share one by one by one, and we think that is really ineffective. And, and scientists cannot actually share at as a really effective time because of all they they have to share what what. Uh, one group to another group to another group and so on. So we think that it's just uh, very ineffective because, they don't, because these scientists nor people have the capacity to actually talk about these information because our proposition just prefers a world like this. Now going on to their main case. Firstly, on uh, first, uh, so there are like uh, main arguments where all this is like really offensive to people and how they actually stop this harm and create more happiness in their side of the house. Firstly, uh, on clarification, opposition concedes this, okay? This will happen in their side of the house. They stop this. But notice how, however, because of how, uh, firstly, our proposition insists on, uh, there will, there will 
will be like bad thoughts that you will keep in yourself. We think that they will actually make the problem worse because oh, when you want to harm someone, like when you have like a bad microaggression on like these like black people, you will probably just want to like cause harm to them, right? We think that this will actually cause even more harm because because of how they can't actually freely like express express themselves in their side of the house. We think that they will just punch them, and we think that it just wor worse in their side. Second, this is only short term. No, notice how in the long term, when embarrassing things get exposed, we don't think that random people will come up to you and say, "Oh, you did this stuff." Ha ha ha! So funny. We think that friends will do this, right? Friends will, no, we don't think that no personal information is that bad, nor are jokes really that offensive, especially when you're having like when you're talking to your best friend. Therefore, because of this can be flipped, because of this can be like a beneficial thing. Because in the long term, when everyone literally just forgets about this and just thinks of it as a funny coincidence or thing, we think that this is, this is just a. Uh, uh, Okay, like uh, friendships because a lot of they can like share this idea as a really funny thing that they can laugh off of. Now going, now going on, now going on to the extensions. Firstly, on so on so, on social improvement. So in the world where we take proposition side, notice how they do not they uh we would have not known many things when we go back. For example, women uh for, or that, know that like women, black or etc. or or LGBT, LGBTQ that they they would not, would still not be known as people who who are actually people in the society where we actually tell publicly about about what we actually think. We think that in the status quo there may still many misconceptions. Right, women are still getting less pay. Black black people are still getting uh getting killed by police brutality and LGBTQ are still getting dis discriminated. If we take proposition side, we think that no protest will actually be a thing right now, right? Because peaceful protests will not be a thing. Because all these peaceful actions will, will not be made to create change because all, they can't actually have the capacity to do this in the first place. Second thing on innovation of the extension. Firstly, notice that in the status quo, a world is, our, our world is already screwed, right? This is because you have like carbon and carbon emissions, CO2, heat shock, floods, and so much more that it is going to end humanity as a whole. So in the status quo, scientists are also desperately trying to find a solution as, as to solve this. So we think that... Uh, to, like they saw this like by, by finding like, a new habitable place and also just materials to stop or delay climate change in general. And when and in the side in the world where we uh, where scientists actually eventually do find a solution, we know they, they when they actually find a new, uh, solution. What uh. Like they finally find a solution to, to like colonize Mars, they, they can't actually announce it to the public, right? Rather, only groups like SpaceX that, that uh this mean, uh, can actually know this. This means that SpaceX can only survive in this crisis. So because they cannot spread information to media or the public, this means that only on uh, only privileged people who are part of these like private groups would survive. What does this look like? This looks like where, where a world where proposition is keeping the survival of humanity out, and therefore because of a proposition that brings the ends of humanity, we uh, uh, when keeping things private, while we only harm the people by a little bit by a little bit by making maybe in their best case scenario by like insulting them we think that that just completely just outweighs the, uh, the amount of harm that they're giving therefore because of all these reasons very very proud to oppose thank you we thank the deputy leader of opposition summarize the case for government government whip Okay, am I both um visible and audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you're ready. Okay, so I'll like to start my speech in three, two, one. So as the first speaker, I'll like to rebut some of the points brought by the opponent and introduce our team with the postures that I will be able to identify for the quickly. So now I'll be one to the rebuttal. So I'll like to rebut the general case and arguments brought by the opposite side. So first of all, to rebut the first point, I'll like to clearly state that the government's first argument does not stand in today's debate because A, in the start of the debate, our prime minister clearly stated and characterized the debate of these people who keep um so like keep only certain and only their opinions um, to themselves and actually tell the truth and facts to society, right? So finding fire and these important facts and facts will actually send to the public, right? Because this is not, this is not an opinion. So like, there's a fire. This is the opinion. Like, I don't think that's opinion, right? So we said this is actually a fact which our prime minister clearly stated that this whole, which our case, um, which our case clearly stated throughout this whole debate, which they should have engaged, right? And B, even if this is true, our case also solves certain problems like stereotypes, racism, and other and other things because we also don't tell their own opinions as well, right? Because when you think that women are weaker than men or something like that, you will not be able to. I'll take the PR later, and we'll able to state this in the first place, right? So we believe um I'll further extend these points of the debate. And second, moving on to next rebuttal, I'll to clearly said that their case is very very confusing in today's debate because they're competing and contradicting to all of their points in the first place. And already got the off is just um excessively erase everything because. 
first, like, does it mean that the off thinks hot world is not going to be, like, going to have any scientists in the first place? And second, there's still humans, and they think humans in our side is robot and not going to share any opinions because of robots, right? And however, it's just, it is just our side prefers majority to be private, right? Oh, yes, I'll like to take the PR before I move on. So Galileo Galilei's theory about the Earth being round was kept private because, as you said, it was a theory they did not have NASA at that point and was discovered centuries later. So what does your side do to have efficiency in society? So we believe like that was actually a fact in today's society in the first place, and that's actually proven in the future, right? So we believe this is actually a fact of this consider and our um and like clearly proof and I'll let, and continuing to me to, to, continuing my speech. They said it is not expensive. However, if you look at the status quo, it's literally happening. So they can't rebut rebut it, right? So for example, do they mean that gossip is not offensive to um the opponent side? So I like to clearly move on to my clash one. So we should provide the better study overall for these fake rules, right? So we see that in our status quo. Okay? often keeping their own thoughts to themselves and oh and openly just talking to the public or keeping their experiences and thoughts private right so when we compare the two scenarios we believe they'll actually keep these thoughts which literally can every can can change every single time and can be false to yourself because it can be very offensive and unnecessary in the opposition's world, which we have clearly stated and impacted throughout this whole debate. And adding on, the reason why this is so important is because these individuals have the right to actually be respected, right? And adding on, we believe that this is offensive because um, if you're like saying that, if you're like gossiping about your friend, this is actually not offensive in the first place. And moving on to the next point, honorable adjudicator, when we compare the best case scenario and, and a best case, like best impact on um, on their side and our best impact, we believe our benefits are way bigger than the opposition side. Because if if we look at their best case of um best best case of like where they can identify problems like first and um our um, if we compare to our best case, which were a we can provide um others being offended um, by another person, and B, create a happy society, and C, we can reduce discrimination and the individual's own thoughts of racism and stereotypes in the first place. So as a result, we believe that in our best case, our impact is way more bigger, so overall, addition, uh, overall, overall. And additionally, because they have these massive harms that they never engaged, we believe we actually take this debate home, and, they, uh, and their uh, massive um, harms still stand in today's um, debate uh, overall, so I'm very, very we thank the government whip to summarize the debate for opposition. Opposition whip. Okay, assuming that an audible will make people start in three, two, one. Judge Proposition's only engagement to our points is that when people know that it's logical enough, people are illogical enough to share important information. Two things here. One, what is the valid metric of logical? We believe that people in the status quo have very different metrics of how they measure logical in the first place um, and important. Second, um, before um, a theory is actually proven by an experiment, it's actually a personal thought. If you think about it, talk about the relativity theory. Do we have an experiment to actually prove it in the status quo? We do not believe um, that's necessarily the case, but it is very very important in the status quo because that personal thought, which is a theory, plays an important role. Um, biggest problem coming from the side proposition is that they conceded to our whole case and they, they did not have enough weighing ultimately. Why does their impact outweigh ours? So before I move on to my clashes, let me rebut three main points that came from side proposition. First, um, they, do, they say that they do not have inaccurate information. Just either way, unless shocking science theory or like shocking whistleblowing information that which people have the incentive to cover up, we believe that people love gossiping, right? That's a, a mutually exclusive, um, that's actually what exists on both sides. But rather, government side is actually worse than this because government, A, they do not have the original version of who actually started the rumor or who actually started the story. And B, on their side, not everyone knows about it. So there's less check and balances, at least on the side opposition a if it's spread by the media or sns people can actually find the original version of who spread it therefore they can actually make um they can actually check if it's fact or not b public attention will increase so they will have more check and balance and find out if it's actually fact or not next moving on to the part about conflict and being offended so information eventually moves around unless you set a certain um, a certain 
and unless a certain portion of them shut them down. It's actually worse on side proposition because it revolves around in rumors and gossips. Misinformation is most likely to happen on their side because it's vastly different. People know um, pe what people know is vastly different on their side, therefore increase of conflicts. Even if the information is very accurate throughout like millions of people, it is um, people have people know different types of information, therefore less likely to concede to each other's arguments. Um, three, um, is that they talked about discrimination, right? Does discrimination happen because of the media? Not necessarily the case. People think that other people are weird and that's a human instinct, unfortunately. If they fail to concede to other different types of people, then they express it to people. It exists on both sides, both proposition and um, opposition. But rather, their side is where people do not know that it's actually going on and it's happening behind the curtains. With that said, let me move on to the two clashes of the debate. One, which side actually has a society where minorities are heard? Moving on to the first clash, and they said that when people are logical enough to tell, um, they're going to tell other people like valid information. First of all, um, Ella already mentioned why higher officials do not have the incentive to actually share this to society. Why? Because they do not like admitting that they actually made a stupid decision. They do not like admitting that they are actually committing something bad. Therefore, people have the incentive to um, cover it up. Second of all, we do not know which um, information is important when it comes to the individuals. Therefore, not likely to stand. Moving on to the second fact, when it actually comes to which side actually has a society with innovation and how to do well. First of all, incentive to share it with information, um, especially with scientific innovations, realize exclusively and scarcity of the technology is what makes you is what makes people pay higher prices. For example, if you're the only person who has the um, cure for cancer, people are, are going to pay a lot of money for you. Therefore, people do not have the incentive to share these different types of scientific discoveries on their side with other people. And two, when it actually comes to the accuracy of their information, the original version is not actually shown to the general public. Um, and it's actually spread through people. The chance of accuracy um, plummets on their side. Third of all, when it actually comes to the speed of spreading information, innovative technology would take a long time to spread in the first place. And judge, um, coming from your deputy leader of opposition, they say it's scientists' job to share it with the public. Well, pretty much they conceded to our case. This pretty much ruins their case. Why? Because on their side, um, they do not know if it's a fact, right? This is for many reasons. A, the, the process before the fact or the experience is actually the theory. On our side, we have the general public to actually willing to fund for that kind of experiment, therefore more likely to have experiments. B, when it actually comes to experiments, they're also a form of personal experience. And C, when it actually comes to, um, sometimes it even is, isn't really a fact. It's usually like a personal thought, such so as a theory. Th therefore, we win two clashes. Very proud to oppose. Thank you. We thank the opposition whip to uh, close the debate for opposition. Opposition reply. Am I clearly audible? Yes, you are. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to just start my speech in three, two, one. Okay, so because the opposition never actually contended our team's impacting and our team's weighing, we believe that if we just defend our case, because they never actually contested our impacting, we believe that if we just defend our case, because our team has clearly proved why our team's impact is way bigger than their team's impact, if we just defend our case, we believe that we win this debate even in our worst case. So why does their rebuttals to our case not stand in this debate? Okay, I think our opposition whip and deputy leader of our opposition clearly rebutted this, but I would just like to repeat this one more time. So basically, they talked about, okay, people are logical enough to say it. What are you going to talk about? And what are you not going to talk about? What is the standard? We don't see any standard coming from the deputy prime minister actually rebutting this, which means that, oh, maybe like people think like, oh, maybe people think that racial slurs are, uh, racial slurs are important for them to talk about. Maybe some people think that, oh, actually me, uh, me finding a new theory. Maybe people think, oh, uh, maybe people don't actually believe in it. Maybe people, maybe like the person actually having the theory don't think it's important enough to actually tell the people. We don't see any kind of standard actually contextualizing what this means, which is exactly why their robotics don't stand. And secondly, they talk about how like, oh, they're not going to stop people from talking. Then, and then like, uh, that, that literally like destroys their whole case because if you're not going to stop people from talking where does you, where does the opposition benefits where does the proposition benefits go and i am questioning what the proposition is actually rebutting in this debate right okay this is the reason why even in the opposition worst case we still outweigh the proposition okay why is this true i would like to weigh the two sides right opposition 
like I, it is clear that we have already robotic, right? So basically, let's I, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say the impacts of what we actually achieve, what and what the opposition, what the proposition has caused. So in the proposition society, you're not gonna have you're not gonna have advancements. Like maybe like they say facts, let's play in their game, even if facts actually happen. Like there's some things that are not tested at best before they actually contest and they actually experiment together, the whole society experience together to actually find it out, right? It is just a theory before that actually happens in if that actually happens. But if it's just a theory and the proposition is like, oh, okay, if it's a theory, I just keep it to my friends, then that will you can find out what that is fact, or is that a fact, or is that not a fact? We don't know, right? This is exactly why proposition won't have innovation. And also finding out like finding out like fire, uh, that that's not a fact, that's a discussion. Discovery. discovery is personal experience and that is exactly why people are going to keep it to themselves in the proposition side they won't think it's an important thing they just think oh i i'm just going to keep it to myself it's just like maybe like it's just a little bit hot they're not going to think it's actually going to be useful in the first place but back before but it's actually useful and it turns out to be actually useful right now people don't like to believe what they think is wrong done. and that is exactly why the proposition will have so much undiscovered things and so less innovation that they're just in their worst case they're just gonna be in the stony right now not having any innovation in the first place and that is exactly why because the proposition has never actually contested our impact thing and uh, we uh, we cover robotics their robotics which don't stand in the debate we outweigh the proposition which is why i'm very proud to uh, oppose in this debate but even if everything i said is not true here are the reasons why proposition loses in the base firstly they defended their case uh they defended their case so much they never actually tried to engage to our first argument which was about social minorities they never protect the minorities which is exactly why i'm very proud to oppose oppose in this space oppose we thank the opposition reply and to finally close this debate government reply Okay, so um, assuming that I'm both um, audible and visible, my speech will begin in three, two, and one. Judge, what kind of world is the opposition giving you? They are giving a world where people are getting bad comments. They are getting rumors that spread as quick as lightning. Judge, we as the opposition give you a world where these kinds of harms in the current status quo are, go are going to be solved by our side and better than the opposition's growth as we provided in this as we provided and proved in this debate. Now before I move on, I'd like to explain why our side takes this debate home and why the opposition has lost this debate. So first, they they said on but it's some kind of new case that they did this Decided to create and ignore our size the DPM speech, so just please engage. And second, I'll be we on the proposition have proved our burden and how we clearly give you a happier society for the people. And third, they said they decided to uh, to ignore your case and POI about facts which prove facts we we kind of were going to and kept answering, which proves their lack of engagement. And directly rebut to any of our arguments, and their only rebuttal was about facts and quote unquote we concede their points. Now and lastly, they keep talking about discoveries, but discoveries are not personal and they're they're not thoughts which we have proved throughout the entire debate. So and so now I stand on this, I like to just compare the two cases brought brought by both sides in this debate and and this debate starting off with the so starting off with the opposition's best case, which was about how we, we cannot identify social problems, but no, because we have already we're already from our PM speech that facts are an exception, but they keep having but they keep having this monotonous response in their case that facts are needed and their best case is in shambles due to our rebuttals. And now their worst case. Let's talk about their worst case because we believe that this should be emphasized greatly here. They all, uh, they talk about not all personal jokes are offensive, but how but how can they ex explain that our the problem our problems can but how can they explain the problems that, that can that has rise in society because of these because of these remarks? And now uh, moving on to. Uh, our size worst, our size worst case. So notice that judge, they only, they only did, they did as a rebuttal was, 
it was first, we conceded their point, like I said, and they talk about stuff such as benefits, but we have told you that our benefit actually outweigh theirs because all of the analysis that we provided, and we believe that the, the worst case has still won the best in this debate. Our worst case has still won the best case of theirs in this debate, and now moving on, on and now lastly, on our best case. So our best case is that we actually deserve to win your ballot because first, we have we have clearly characterized this debate about the purpose of the problems, and second, we have time to rebuttal all of their uh, all of their rebuttals. So so um so therefore, we give you strong benefits, impacts, and arguments that stand until the very end of this debate. So so proud to stand by the proposition mentioned and to say that the proposition has taken this debate home. Thank you. We thank the government reply, and um, I thank all the speakers for a great and very insightful debate.